Hello, my name is Dr. Paul Choi. Today, I'd like to discuss to about an organism called Helicobacter pylori. It's a very common disease that I found throughout the world. Many patients have asked me questions regarding its epidemiology, diagnosis, and treatment. And today, I'd like to briefly summarize these aspects of this organism. Helicobacter pylori was first discovered by Dr. Marshall and his team in Australia in 1983. Since then, we have learned a lot about this disease. In fact, what we know is that this is an organism that lives primarily in the human stomach. It requires acid and therefore it is extremely hard to find this organism outside the human stomach. This disease is commonly found in lesser developed countries. Therefore, we find that Helicobacter pylori infection is much more prevalent in countries like Africa, uh, countries in South America, and to a certain degree, Far East. As these countries uh, undergo development, however, its incense does decline and therefore uh, the disease associated with this organism also have been uh, demonstrating a uh, decrease in their incidence. Helicobacter pylori is commonly associated with peptic ulcer disease. When I say peptic ulcer disease, I mean gastric or stomach ulcer and duodenal ulcer. Additionally, Helicobacter pylori is associated with gastritis and other entities such as intestinal metaplasia, atrophic gastritis, uh, sometimes even dysplasia, and eventually gastric cancer. Basically, these conditions are pre-malignant conditions that predispose an individual to uh, the development of gastric cancer. Not all patients with Helicobacter pylori go on to develop gastric cancer. However, there is a marked increase in the incidence of cancer among patients who are infected with this organism. For example, one study have found that Helicobacter pylori infection is associated with up to six times the risk of developing cancer lifetime versus someone without the infection. How to make the diagnosis of Helicobacter pylori? Well, there are four different type of tests that are currently available uh, and they include blood tests, a serology that tells you whether you are infected with this organism or not. Unfortunately, if you're from uh, endemic countries such as, for example, Korea, where up to 85% of the population are infected uh, with this organism, then positive test result may not in fact tell you whether you currently have the infection or not. Therefore, it is very use useful in countries where the infection rate is low, but uh, in countries with high incidence or individuals from high incidence, this test is not as useful. There are other tests such as stool antigen tests where they test for the antigen or the marker of the infection in the stool specimen. There is also <coughs> a test called a breath test where they test the byproduct of the urease, uh, an enzyme that is commonly found in this infection. More commonly, uh, we perform upper endoscopy examination where we can 
examine the entire lining of opointational tract. This test enables one to test not only Helicobacter pylori, but other en entities such as ulcer, reflux disease, as well as uh, even cancer. When we do upper endoscopy examination, we take a very small specimen of the gastric lining and test it for the presence of the infection by a test called clot test or something equivalent to that. Uh, we can tell you uh, within uh, two hours, in most cases, whether there is an infection or not. There is some controversy regarding whether to treat patients with Helicobacter pylori or not. That is because the incidence of uh, serious side effects uh, arising from Helicobacter pylori, such as gastric cancer, seem to be declining. However, if you are from an endemic area, such as Korea, Japan, China, South America, Africa, then I think you have to think twice about just letting the infection go because you are, in fact, at a markedly increased risk of developing uh, this deadly disease if you do not treat a known agent that promotes uh, stomach cancer. Usually, uh, patients who are infected with Helicobacter pylori who are treated requires two weeks of therapy. The treatment includes an acid suppressant or proton pump inhibitor as well as two separate antibiotics for a duration of two weeks. The efficacy of eradicating the organism is up to 85 to 90 percent and not only do you have a uh, uh, markedly decreased incidence of recurrence of peptic ulcer disease, gastritis, and so forth, but there appears to be strong data that eradicating the organism itself will prevent the development of gastric cancer. I hope uh, I have been able to summarize uh, briefly the epidemiology, diagnosis, and the tr rationale for treatment of this very important and interesting organism. Thank you for listening.